Hello everyone, Darren here, and on today's episode of Watch the Academy, we are going to be looking at the sixth installment of the Map Awareness series. Now, you can see that I'm in the Italian Tier 10 medium tank, the Progetto 65, uh, arguably one of the most difficult tanks to play at Tier 10, and we are on Pearl River Standard Battle. Now, right away, um, I, I alert to the team of where we should have uh, a, a good amount of attention focused to, and that is the northern part of the map. It is a very it is a very brawl centered section of the map and arguably one of the most important sections second to the bowl right there in the middle if not just as important. And what you're looking and as you can see right now here if you are paying attention to the map is that there is like next to no one coming this direction and there's only me uh, an E50 and going to be a 50 TP coming up behind. Uh, the light tank tells me to fall back. I didn't really choose at that moment. I was thinking, you know, I want to see how many people are there. The bat chat rolls up. Luckily, I had a couple rounds loaded. I put one into the bat chat. And then I'm going to move into the middle because I obviously cannot fight the bat chat with my armor and my gun. So I move to the middle, and that's when everything just starts getting spotted. And at that moment, I decide I am not staying here. I am leaving. And this is pretty much going to be the best choice for me and my saving grace. What I end up doing here is I abandon the position, the E50 is going to die, the 50 TP is going to die, and what am I doing right now is I'm going to fall back to a more favorable position and establish pretty much a defensive line to defend the base and artillery. As you can see, artillery has not moved at all. He has not moved. Uh, he could be killed if he's spotted from the tanks right over there. We have no one in the bowl. Um, so the 279 is able to just literally roll up and has eyes on our base. Um, I, he misses a shot on me. I'm just going to keep moving. I try to dip around because I use my somewhat low profile and try and hide over that little ridge or rice paddy ridge. And I'm going to try and fall back here and stay with these TDs and provide not only spots for the TDs and hopefully get some spot assist, but I'm going to help them and try and establish a defensive line with them to defend the base while the rest of my team apparently decided to move south around and while it worked for them in the south because the rest of the enemy team is up north it is just a counterclockwise so that basically means that it is up to us right here on this defensive line to defend the base and buy time for the southern force to sweep through and clean up behind them and um no, I'm not really going to spoil much of anything. It gets pretty hairy here. But as you can see, we're doing a pretty good job so far of holding the own, cleaning up. Um, I'm pretty much hanging back right now because I want to try and get fully reloaded. And I want to make sure that I'm unspotted so that way I can move to a more favorable position for myself. And that is this little section right here. This is a pretty good section if you're small enough to use this ridge and hide. Other than that, it's not the best if you are a very large tank or a tank that doesn't have a very good um, turret. So right now, I am trying to, I, I'm going to pretty much extend, ex expend my entire clip, save for that last round, because I don't want to be having over a minute long reload, but I, I will take shots if I have the opportunity, and some of them are worth taking that shot, like that one shot right there. You know, I tracked him, lit him on fire, and I'm getting spot assist for it. It is an excellent uh an excellent shot in that case and worth maybe potentially having a longer reload than what I could have had. So I'm sitting here, once I get spotted or I get, you know, so I'm getting aimed at, I duck down behind this large ridge. The enemy artillery is too focused on something else to actually bother. He could, depending on where he is positioned, he could hit me here. Not very good. This tank is like pretty much a hot knife through butter. The artillery being the hot knife and my tank being the butter, it would not go well. Get a nice good shot there onto the grill 15. I am so far, as you can see, I have over 3,000 combined damage, almost 4,000 combined damage now, if not already. And at this point in time, I, I'm just sitting here trying to assist the light tank and just pretty much right now, we're just stalling the enemy team. And that is what I'm, I'm trying to do and be aware of here is that I'm watching the uh, the southern forces actually slowly 
getting eaten alive or is either off the map to the point that I can't see what's going on. But as you can see, they're slowly being overwhelmed as the uh, red team has noticed where they are at and reacted to them and having at least half their force coming back to defend their own base. And so that kind of made it a little bit easier for us, but since a lot of the tanks here providing the spot either did not have the armor or did not have the health to actually go and finish up some of these tanks, it, it pretty much was a little bit no one was going to move up. And I wasn't going to move up in the sense because of my armor and the fact that my gun would get me into trouble if I used all four rounds. It's not the most reliable gun, but it's only really reliable when the rounds penetrate and the tank is able to be taken out with four shots. But then you're pretty much a sitting duck with over a minute long reload. So I'm sitting back, I'm going to be providing from like the supporting role with the auto reloading mechanism. And the biggest threat right now was that 279E. Currently in the game, uh, the front feels pretty broken while the rest of the tank is seems pretty balanced here. But frontally, I would not be able to do anything. And the, uh, the 268 version 4 is also another bigger threat, but he was less of a threat because, you know, you could at least pen him. At some in some instances, uh, I, I moved forward here because uh, I noticed that the light tank shifted around to the southern side of the uh, village and uh, was trying to provide extra spots for the TD still sitting up there on that ridge. So I decided because I still had full health, um, I was going to move up and take over that role and hope that I could spot the 268 version 4 for our own artillery, who was still alive, by the way, to go in and hopefully drop a bomb onto the 268 version 4 or even the 279e um, i don't exactly remember i wasn't paying much attention to what happened with artillery i was more focused on trying to spot the uh the rest of the tanks over here for the tds and luckily i do i spot the enemy artillery i put a shot in i miss uh, again, I, if you watched, this was during a stream that I, I honestly was getting really mad during this game because rounds that should have actually hit where they were were not. 279E decides to double back in because I got spotted there in the open and he wanted free damage. This is where the auto-loading part of the uh, of the uh, Progetto here comes into play. I managed to bounce a shot, surprisingly, and thankfully I had the four rounds that would have allowed me there to take care of the Emil too. Uh, the E4 takes care of the Artie, so that's two tanks down, plus spot assist. As you can see, I am over 5,000 damage right now, if not at 5,000 combined damage. The, the tank was... The tank is very difficult to play. With no armor, you essentially have to play that role of the supporting medium or and a cross between a bat chat. There is no defined role for this tank the way I see it. It is capable of being aggressive like a bat chat and sweeping through with its autoloader, but because of the fact that it, it's super long reload and the auto reloading mechanism, I, it's more of like a support tank at the same time. Now, I doubled back because the 279E was back where it was in the, the first half of the, the map here. And so I do the same tactic. Luckily, unfor not luckily, unfortunately, it does not work and I do take a shot and, um, I was just mad at myself. It was how could I be so stupid to literally let myself get taken, get a shot on that like that. Uh, I should have let Artie put a, a fire at him, kept him spotted, stayed where I was at. But I felt time was of the essence here, and I need to move quickly in order to help the team more. Because currently, as it stood, is that uh, that TD over there, as far as we knew, had no support and was by himself. Artillery managed to uh, dunk a shot, I believe, if that was artillery, into one of the TDs, but it looked like it didn't really do much. So what I'm moving, doing right now is I'm trying to get higher up to maybe I could shoot down on the enemy tanks over there, but the tortoise gets taken out before I could actually get to a position uh, to help him out. Waffle is sitting there, as you can see, right there on the tip. If he were to fire, he would get spotted, and it would probably just be the end of the game for him. We are up by one tank, and that is because we do not have our arty taken out, unlike the enemy team. So I'm moving over. I want to try and support the, the light tank a little bit. And then a full health Waffle appears, and during this, I was like, oh, oh, crap. Oh, no. And I just go right into the wall, right behind the rock. I take another shot. 
uh, by the bat chat that's still alive. Um, he, I go unspotted. Luckily, he misses that second shot. That probably would have killed me. And at this point, I'm just hiding in between the foliage. Uh, I want to try and get a shot on the the waffle. I don't. I have a feeling that I know where the bat chat's at. He's probably right there on that ridge hill, right on the line of J34. And um, I, w I want to try and stay safe from that. But again, I'm pretty much going to be able to be taken out by anything else. Uh, the waffle got spotted. He got taken out really, really quickly. That is why you don't, in a paper tank, you don't want to be sitting there on that ridge. And it is now to the point where the 279E, I'm having a feeling he could come up right behind me. Um, what, but, you know, I got the RD as a very early warning device, and if the tank is coming up closer behind me, I have the E4 behind me to assist as well. So, the enemy waffle is still up. He's still around somewhere. We're, we're looking for him. Uh, I'm just pretty much right now trying to act as that scout. The 279E gets spotted. I, don't, I was a little bit surprised that he came from that direction. I would have felt that he would have been better off coming down from the bowl coming around behind us seen as the most of the team was pretty much focused on that area where the majority of the enemy was and because I know that I'm a one shot and I know that I can't really deal with the tank frontally um, I was very cautious about where I wanted to engage and I wanted to engage from a very high position so I tried to get a some form of a buffer whether it was psychological or physical and that I was going to use the E4 but the E4 takes two uh, pretty hefty shots and pretty much loses a good really large chunk of his health I'm, I'm hoping the bat chat I want to try and get at least a good shot here on the bat chat before he crests he goes unspotted so I'm trying to predict light tank comes up to provide spots so he's luckily still full health but again he's a light tank not really going to be able to do much e4 is reloading uh, at 11 seconds left and so that pretty much means that me and possibly the arty are the only remaining tanks uh, capable right now of firing a shot at this immediate moment. Uh, Artie is on the move as well. He uh, decided to actually come closer to us and move from his original position and is either staying stationary to remain unspotted or is waiting for us to get eyes on. The 279E is coming up here and I was, in, during this game I was like, why are you bringing him to me? Why are you bringing him to me? I, I cannot excuse me, take care of this tank. And so I'm backing up with him. I, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was literally saying no so many times while I was backing up here. E4 sacrifices himself to take care of the 279E. So the most dangerous tank at that time, aside from the waffle, was taken out thanks to his sacrifice. I push in with the autoloader to help finish off the bat chat so he wouldn't get clipped out. Uh, so the T100 would not get clipped out. The waffle is is over there and i already already luckily is able to no i apologize it was the 268 version 4 that was still alive and luckily already managed to go in and take care of it and as you can see here we lock up a solid five and a half thousand combined damage this game it's a very difficult tank to play but if you know the strengths and weaknesses and the capabilities of your tank as well as a good solid understanding of the auto reloading mechanism and the characteristics of the Progetto 65. You can make it work for you and you can get some pretty good high damage, especially with that 400 base view range that you can, you can pretty much act like a light tank as well. But that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, this has been Darren of Watsi Academy.